You know, looking at the reality of what is happening in the world today, one of the verses in the Quran that is very pertinent for us is a verse that was revealed after some of the tragedies, like the Battle of Uhud, when the Muslims were feeling a little bit demoralized, a little bit down. And Allah Azza wa Jal revealed in Surah An Nisa, "In takunu ta'lamun, fa innahum ya'lamun kama ta'lamun, wa tarjoon min Allah ma la yarjoon." If you are in pain, then realize they too have pain like your pain. Both sides have suffered. This is in the Battle of Uhud. Allah is saying. In takunu ta'lamuna, if you have tragedies, if you have had loss of life, if you are bleeding, realize they too are in fear and bleeding. They too are in pain. Then Allah says, "What is the difference between your side and their side?" Wa tarjuna min Allahi ma la yarjun. But you have a hope and an optimism and a positive spirit with Allah that they do not have. So today's brief khatira will be about the reality of this hope, the reality of this raja, the reality of this optimism that Allah commands us when we feel down, when we feel deflated, when the world seems to just throw us so much bitterness, when there doesn't seem optimism. Allah says the two sides are not the same. They're never going to be the same because yes, you have suffered tragedy. Yes, you have suffered defeat. And yes, by the way, so have they. It's a two-way street in that regard. But on the one hand, you have Allah, and you have hope in Allah, and you have raja in Allah, and they have no such equivalent. So what is this hope? And what is this raja? And how many categories are there? That's going to be our brief talk today. The concept of raja, the concept of hope, Ibn al-Qayyim says, having hope in Allah is linked to understanding who Allah is. When you understand Allah is al karim Allah is Al-Mannan, Allah is Ar-Rahman, Allah is Ar-Ra'uf. When you understand the divine nature of Allah, the attributes of Allah, automatically you will be optimistic. Automatically you will feel a sense of hope and a sense of positive attitude. So, Iman in Allah automatically causes optimism. And not having Iman in Allah will cause what? Pessimism. Not having Iman in Allah will cause a lack of positive hope. And this is exactly what Ya'qub says when he sends his children out after 25 years of searching for Yusuf and not even getting a scent of Yusuf, not even a whiff of Yusuf. Ya'qub says to his children that, oh my children, try again one more time and do not give up hope of Allah's mercy. Notice the optimism is there and there is no glimmer. There's no light at the end of the tunnel, but the optimism is there. Do not give up hope in Allah's mercy because only the kafir, he says, gives up hope of Allah's mercy. This is Surah Yusuf. Only the kafir. If you don't know who is Allah, if you don't know the names of Allah, then and only then will you give up hope in Allah's mercy. Otherwise, you will always be optimistic. You will always have a positive attitude. Now, if you look at the Quran and the Sunnah, one can extract at least seven specific categories of raja, of, of optimism, and inshallah, we'll go over them very, very quickly today. And as usual, our khatras are very brief. So the first of them, the first raja, the first optimism is to be optimistic that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you for your good deeds. You give sadaqah, you pray tahajjud, you come to the masjid. There should be a raja that Allah will reward me. And the Prophet explicitly said, Man sama Ramadana iman and wahtisaban. This ihtisab is raja. Whoever fasts Ramadan with iman and expecting Allah's reward, this is raja over here. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that that they give from their money, uh, they give from their money, when they give sadaqah, they have a raja that Allah will give them a transaction that will never be, uh, 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 that will never be uh, at a loss. It will all be, always be positive. So Allah links charity with raja. When the mu'min gives charity, when the mu'min fasts, there is a type of raja that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give me more than my deeds that I have given in him. The second type of raja is the raja of Allah's rahma when you are suffering, when you are in pain. The first was raja of Allah's thawab when you do a good deed. The second raja of Allah's rahma when you are in pain, when something happens. You console yourself when your heart 
is feeling pained, when you're feeling anxious, when you're feeling stressed out, you bring some ointment to the heart, spiritual ointment. That spiritual ointment calms the heart down. What is the spiritual ointment? Raja, that every pain that I feel, Allah will reward me for it. Allah will give me His Rahmah. And that's what Allah says in the Quran, Yarjuna Rahmat Allah. They have Raja in Allah's Rahmah. So anytime you're facing calamity, tragedy, grief, stress, anxiety, you should placate yourself you should make yourself feel optimistic that you know what this pain is not in waste this pain is not in vain every pain that I have our Prophet ﷺ said Ma asaba mu'minun. no mu'min has hamun wala hazan no uh, no grief nor anxiety nor stress nor any physical pain even a thorn that pricks him except that Allah will reward him for that this is authentic hadith of Sahih Bukhari no mu'min has grief or anxiety stress or pain he mentioned four things each one of them covers all the problems of this dunya whatever problem you're facing you have to expect Allah's raja. Allah will give you reward for that suffering that you have. This is the second type of raja. The third type of raja is a raja in which you are optimistic and hoping. You're excited to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You should be positively daydreaming that one day a time will come where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, I will meet him and Allah will bless me and Allah will reward me. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man ahabba liqa Allahi ahabba Allahu liqa'ahu. Whoever is eager and loves to meet Allah, Allah is eager to meet him. Aisha radiallahu anha said, Ya Rasulallah, none of us likes death. None of us, we, we, death is an uncertainty. The Prophet said, no, I'm not talking about death. Yes, death we are scared, scared of, but there's going to be a place after death. There's going to be a meeting after death. The Prophet said, when the mu'min sees Allah's blessings, he will be excited to see Allah. That is the point here. When the mu'min sees Allah's rahmah at the time of death, during death, in the qabr, all of the blessings will be presented. That will calm the mu'min down and the mu'min will be excited to see Allah. That is a raja. And even in this world, there should be an excitement and a positive attitude that insha'Allah ta'ala on the day of judgment yes we'll, we're going to come to the point there should always be fear as well we're going to come to this point fear and, and hope will be together but there should be hope as well today we're talking about hope another khatir will also mention the fear issue because they go hand in hand but hope and Allah says in the Quran that yarjuna liqa Allah. they are wanting liqa Allah yarjuna, they are looking forward to liqa to meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the third type of raja the fourth type of raja is the necessary Necessary result of the third type. What happens when you positively meet Allah? You will meet Allah's reward, which is Jannah. So number four, you are excited for Jannah. Raja for Jannah itself. You should be optimistic that inshallah you will enter Jannah. Optimism always tempered with fear, as I said. Optimism and fear go hand in hand. You should genuinely be excited. You should want to meet Allah, and then this should lead to entering Jannah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Liman kana yarju Allah those who are having raja of Allah and of the last day meaning of Jannah so there should be an excitement and an optimism for the believer that insha'Allah ta'ala I want to enter Jannah I'm excited to go to Jannah this is the fourth type of raja the fifth type of raja that is mentioned in the Quran the fifth type of raja of hope of optimism is optimism that yes I have committed sins but insha'Allah Allah is forgiving and will forgive me so raja of forgiveness Raja that if I turn to Allah and if I do tawbah, then Allah will forgive all of my sins. This is a part and parcel of Iman. And the mu'min always hopes of forgiveness, even as they're scared of not being forgiven. As we will mention at the end, Raja and Khawf go hand in hand. But we're mentioning right now Raja. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the reality of uh, uh, the Raja of Rahmat Allah and the Raja of Maghfirat Allah. And in the hadith in Sahih Bukhari, when the Prophet visited a person on his death, and he asked this person, how do you feel right now? And the person said that I am scared of Allah's anger, but I'm hopeful of Allah's forgiveness. I'm scared, but I'm also hopeful Allah will forgive me. And the Prophet ﷺ said, never do these two emotions combine at the time of death, except that, listen to this, Allah will protect him from what he's scared of and grant him from what he's optimistic in. 
Never do these two emotions combine at the time of death, except that Allah has guaranteed that Allah will protect you from what you're scared. The man said, I'm scared of my sins. But then what he also say? And I'm optimistic. I have raja. He said, Arju rahmat Allah. I have raja that Allah will also forgive me for my sins. The Prophet said, anytime these two emotions are combined at this time of death, because there's no fooling around at the time of death. At the time of death, you will be serious. At the time of death, your real you will come out. You know you're about to die. You're on your deathbed. You're on your final stages. At that stage, your heart is worried about your bad deeds, but optimistic about your good deeds and forgiveness. That combination is what will get you Jannah. So this is the uh, fifth category of raja, raja of forgiveness of sins. The sixth category of raja, the sixth category of optimism is optimism in Allah answering your du'as. Optimism in Allah answering your du'as. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when you make du'a to Allah, then be certain that Allah will answer your du'as. You don't make a wishy-washy du'a. You don't make a dua that you are, nah, maybe Allah will give, maybe Allah will not give. No. When you make dua, you have raja. Allah will answer me. Allah is Samir. Allah is Qareeb. Allah is Mujib. Allah is the one who answers dua. You should have a positive attitude. Allah said, uh, the Prophet said, Ud'u Allah wa antum muqinuna bil ijaba. Make dua to Allah in the state of you being yaqeen that Allah will listen to you and answer you. Have the highest form of raja. Be certain that Allah is listening and Allah will respond. This is the sixth category of raja. You have raja when you make dua. And all of this goes back to iman. If you know Allah is sami' if you know Allah is qareeb, if you know Allah is mujib, if you know that Allah is amma yujibul muttarra idha da'a, if you know all of these attributes of Allah, how can you possibly lose hope in Allah's answering your dua? This is the sixth category of dua. And the seventh category of, of, of raja, the seventh and final category we'll mention, and of course there are others as well, but a summary. The seventh and final category we'll mention. Raja for matters of this world. Raja, optimism for a better life. For Allah's aid coming down. For political victory, military victory. Raja for a pay raise in your job. Raja for promotion of you want. You should be optimistic for the dunya as well. And this is a part of Raja. Uh, the Prophet, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that uh, If you cannot give your parents what you want or what they're asking for, but you are hopeful that Allah will give it to you, then still give them positive words and Allah will give you what you want. In other words, your parents are demanding something and you don't have the money to give them. So Allah, Allah is saying, You should have raja that Allah will give you what, what they are wanting for and be positive in your attitude towards them. Don't say to them, I don't have anything. Rather be optimistic and say, inshallah, we'll make it. Inshallah, we'll help it out. And Allah will give you from his rahmah. And this here, rahmah here means money because the parents are asking for something and the man doesn't have it. Allah is saying, ah, but you should have ibtigha'a rahmatin min rabbika tarjuha. You should have that optimism that Allah will give you what you want or what your parents are asking of you even of this dunya. And this goes back to uh, the verse that I began, the khatira by, that if you are suffering, they're also suffering. But you have raja that they do not have. And a part of that raja is military victory. A part of that raja is political victory. A part of that raja is the conquest of Makkah that Allah gave to the Prophet and the Sahaba. This is also a part of raja. We shall be victorious. We will be the winners. Allah Azza wa Jal and his army will be the victorious army. Inna jundana lahum al -ghalibun. This is a raja. The haq is always gonna win over the batil. This is a raja. We should have that raja even for for matters of this world. Now before we conclude, obviously as I've already hinted at, Raja must always coexist with another emotion and that is what? Khawf, fear. Raja should never be 100% absent from fear. The two coexist. The two are always buddies. You have to have both. Because if fear did not exist, Raja would become arrogance. It would not be hope. You get the point. Hope automatically means it's not guaranteed. Because hope is hope. Hope is an emotion. 
If you remove fear from the equation, hope becomes arrogance. Hope becomes a demand. And we do not have the right to demand. We do not have the right to expect that it will happen. That's not us. So we are hopeful. We are optimistic. We have raja. And raja is always tempered with khawf, as we said. Uh, and then one final nukta, which I'm not going to go over. I have um, given a brief khatira, I think last year about this, but it deals with raja. And that is one of the famous genres of tafsir and of adab literature is the contest, if you like, which verse in the Quran is the most raja full verse? I just made a new word, raja full. Arja. Which verse in the Quran has the most raja? Which verse of the Quran is the most optimistic? And this is a nukta, this is a genre that we find uh, scholars, they write about it. And they love to say, oh, depending on who you ask, each famous scholar and each famous sahabi had a different verse. And I, I gave a khatira, I'm not going to go over it today, it's another 20 minute khatira. I went over, I think, 10 or 15 of the sahaba and tabi'un. Abu Bakr had one verse, Umar had one verse, Uthman, Ali radiallahu anhum, uh, Umm al-Darda, uh, Ibn Mas'ud, Ibn Abbas, and then the sahaba, and then Imam al-Shafi. We all have collections of people that they read the Quran, read the Quran, read the Quran, and then they say, oh, in my opinion, this verse is the most arja ayatin fi kitabillah, the most Raja, full ayah, the most optimistic ayah in the book of Allah. Suffice to say, out of all of the uh, opinions there, the one verse that appears the most commonly as being the most optimistic verse in the whole Quran is, what is it? قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا O oh, my servants who have committed sins against themselves, never give up hope of Allah's mercy. Allah forgives all sins. And we conclude with a beautiful hadith reported in the Musadraq of Al-Hakim. A man comes to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, says, Ya Rasulullah, I have committed so many sins. I don't know what to do. I've, I'm in despair. I've committed so many sins. What do I do now? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, repeat after me. He, he said, repeat after me. He said, Allahumma maghfirataka awsa'u min dhunubi. Oh Allah, your maghfira is bigger and vaster than my sins. Wa rahmataka arja indi arja indi min amali. And your rahma has more hope for me than my good deeds. Oh Allah, your maghfira is bigger than my sins. And oh Allah, your rahma gives me more optimism than what? than my own deeds. Your rahmah is arja than my amal. And the man said this, the Prophet said, go and leave, Allah has forgiven your sins. Beautiful, short hadith. Oh Allah, your maghfira is bigger than my sins. Your maghfira is much more than my sins. And oh Allah, your rahmah brings me more optimism, arja. Your rahmah brings me more optimism than my good deeds. Say this constantly and frequently and believe in it and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fulfill your raja in him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who perfect that raja with khawf and inshallah we'll continue later on. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. فيا ذلي ويا خجلي إذا ما قال لي ربي أما استحييته تعصيني ولا تخشى من العتب وتخفي الذنب عن خلقي وتأبى في الهوى قربي فتب مما جنيت عسى تعود إلى رضا